Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is a lot of confusion in the world concerning religion. There is a great deal of unbelief, of course, but that's not really what we're going to talk about this morning. Those who worship false gods, like the Hindus, the Muslims, and such, they are confused, to say the least. Actually, they're what we once called pagans. And then there are those who claim to worship the same God that we do, the Jews, and the Baha'i, the Mormons, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and the like. They also worship false gods by denying who God is, what he is like, what he wants from us and wants for us. And this is a confusion of another sort as well. But we also call that paganism. But then, of course, there are also those who do not acknowledge the existence of God, atheists and Buddhists and the like. But our direction this morning really doesn't have anything to do with this sort of confusion, this unbelief. Today we'll look at the confusion that exists amongst those who call themselves Christians. And there is still a great deal of confusion among this group about what the gospel is and how we access all that it promises, all that it conveys. What it promises, of course, is the victory of Christ over sin, over death, over hell. Our text calls it the victory that has overcome the world. And that is our focus this morning and also our theme. This is the victory. Now the victory that has overcome the world is our faith. Our faith receives all that Christ has won for us. Our faith receives the forgiveness of sins. Our faith receives blessings strength. Our faith receives eternal life. Now in this life and in this world, we don't really see it. Our flesh doesn't really experience it. The world would have us sin and die like the rest of humanity. Our victory over this desire to destroy is our faith. And it shares in the victory of Christ over sin, over death, and over hell. Now it's not our will, as so many think, that brings us this victory. We don't make the choice to believe. It's not our decision. Scripture tells us that we don't have the ability to make that choice. And even if we did, our sinful nature would cause us to decide not for God. Nor does our salvation then depend on our good behavior or our good works or the depth and the sincerity of our repentance or of our doing some sort of penance or anything like that. Most religions teach that it does. But that's simply not what the Bible says. The simple truth is that Christ has won the victory. And it is ours by grace, through faith. There's nothing else required. There's nothing else expected. And indeed, there is nothing else possible. Faith is the victory. And by faith, we see the things of God and we live in the light of his promises. By faith, people turn from pursuing works and riches, fame, and all sorts of other things. By faith, people turn to follow Jesus. And by faith, we expect the things that we have not seen. And we struggle to be better people than we really feel that we are. And not everyone agrees or believes. Some people who want to, play, want to claim a place in the Christian church, well, some of these deny the word of God altogether. They say it's a fiction, it's a retelling of history with a decidedly Jesus movement on it. Still others then call the Bible man's word concerning God or man's encounter with God, things like that. But the 
the Word of God is so much more. And thankfully, most who call themselves Christians do not consider the Bible to be false or misleading. They believe it is God's Word and honest and true in everything that it says. Their most common problem, however, is that they don't really know what it says or understand what it means. So often what they do believe is actually in direct contradiction with Holy Scripture. Most common about the mistakes and the confusion of a great many people is the idea of having to earn, of deserving, of working towards, meriting, living up to, or being somehow worthy of salvation. Frequently this notion is coupled, quite inconsistently actually, with the idea that everyone that they care about is going to heaven. And while a great many people that they do not know personally are undeserving and lost, whatever it is that is required for salvation is miraculously accomplished for those they love. Now for such people, the victory of the Christian faith is, is managing to stop doing something that they really like to do, or to stop doing something really awful that they can't seem to control their desire. Now the less ambitious then set their sights on making a decision, saying a prayer. Still other groups consider the victory to be remembering that day when they had a, a particular feeling within so that they can be certain that they have what it takes or at least be certain they had it at one time. Our victory, however, is faith. And that is faith in what God has revealed. Those who try to find a victory elsewhere are indeed calling God a liar because his word speaks clearly and teaches the gospel clearly. John writes that those who do not believe what God has taught about Christ are guilty of making God a liar because they do not believe the witness that God has borne concerning his son. Remember those words the next time someone tries to tell you that sound doctrine is not important, or that the feeling good about one another is more important than agreeing on what God's Word teaches. But John also mentions three witnesses, the water and the blood and the Spirit. And this is where John refutes the Gnostic heretics of his day. You see, the Gnostics said that Jesus was fully human and that at his baptism, the Eon Christ, as they called him, descended and took possession of Jesus, making Jesus a great and wise teacher. The Gnostics also then taught that Christ left Jesus before the Passion so that all Jesus suffered was merely one man suffered, and that his death was merely the death of a man and not the death of the Son of God for us. This idea, of course, destroys the gospel. But the Gnostics didn't mind, because they believed it was knowing and understanding the true nature of the universe and of God, who they understood quite different from the creator of the world. That understanding is what's saying. And that's why they're called the Gnostics. It's from the Greek word for gnos for knowledge. But the Gnostics also denied the resurrection because, as they saw it, the material things, the physical things, were evil and were undesirable in their theology. But what John was saying here is that Jesus came as the Son of God. He came as the Christ, not by means of baptism, but also to suffer and to die. The water is not the only witness, nor is it the cause, but it is the blood shed on the cross, it is the very blood of the begotten, the only begotten of the Father, the Son of God. He was Christ at his baptism, he was Christ at his death, and the witness of the Spirit is added, the Holy Spirit of God. And it is the Spirit who bears witness to Christ and 
His witness is truth because the Spirit is truth himself. He answers the Gnostics. He answers all those who would cast doubt on the divinity of Christ Jesus. So John also makes a Trinitarian statement here, calling the Spirit the truth. Jesus proclaims God is true and his word is the truth. Jesus also proclaims that he himself is the truth. And now John connects the Holy Spirit there saying, the Spirit is the truth. He takes this talk of the Spirit then one step farther. And he says, the one who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. When you believe in the Son of God, which includes all that God reveals to us about him, then you have the witness, which is the truth which is the Holy Spirit, which is God himself within you. And this is something we teach, but I don't think we really consider what it means very often. It means that God is always with you. It means that God is always aware of your situation. That God is always wrapped up in your life. That God reveals this to us for our comfort. And John also uses this wonderful truth to contrast those who believe and those who do not. He says, the one who believes in the Son of God has the witness in himself. The one who does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the witness that God has borne concerning his Son. That's quite a contrast. The one who believes has God dwelling in him, has God blessing him. And the one who does not believe is guilty of calling God a liar, of calling God a liar publicly. He doesn't actually need to open his mouth and say anything. Unbelief asserts that God is dishonest. That God is lying simply by not believing what God takes time to reveal. Those who do not believe are guilty because they have not believed the witness that God has borne concerning his Son. And the witness of God is what he reveals in Holy Scripture. So false doctrine, you see, is more than just really a, a silly error, something that, that we just disagree about. In the face of God's clear revelation of the truth in Holy Scripture, false doctrine is actually blasphemy. It is calling God a liar. And that's what the world does. It proclaims that God is not truthful, that we cannot trust what he says. It's a lie as, as old as the world itself, almost. It's that original lie that Satan told in the Garden of Eden. Has God said, Oh, you surely will not die. But by repeating that lie to us time and time again, the world around us shows us its slavery. It's slavery to the father of lies. But our victory over the world, our victory over the father of lies, is to believe what God reveals, particularly in connection with his son and his death for us. And it's God's love and God's rescue that's worked through the passion, and through the crucifixion, and through the death of the only son of God. And so our faith is victory. Just as John teaches us, we believe and we have God with us and we have forgiveness and life and salvation by grace received through faith. And this faith, your faith, this is the victory. So don't look elsewhere. Don't try to achieve it. Don't try to feel it. Don't follow those fads of religion, the, 
the promise keepers, the left behinds, the name it and call it, or really any other fad that's going to come along, come into fashion. Your victory is not out there. And who is the one who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. As John says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ.